I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. So it has been 10 days since my previous episode of SFF Spotlight. So yeah, today uh, today's video will be about SFF Spotlight episode uh, 42. For those of you who are new here, uh, this is where I will talk about new special edition, new novelty release, and of course new news in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And of course I will not forget to talk about new cover reveals as well. But uh, let's get started immediately. As usual, we have more than 20 topics to cover. And first order of business. It seems like in the new interview, uh, George R. R. Martin has been talking about, I don't know, maybe he's joking about this, but he's talking uh, to Cassandra Clare, the author behind The Shadow Hunters, and also the newly released Swordcatcher regarding the possible uh, release date of The Winds of Winter. So in that interview, Cassandra Clare mentioned that she might have a new book coming out in 2025. And of course, George Martin said that that book by Cassandra Clare might have a big chance of being released sooner than The Winds of Winter. If he's not joking about this, and I do not think he's joking about this, well, I do not think we will be getting The Winds of Winter until at least uh, 2026. But do let me know what you think about this. To recap George Martin's progress on The Winds of Winter uh, briefly, I think he has mentioned that he's currently about uh, 75% 70, through the winds of winter in 12 years of writing. So, well, if we're following the progress here, that means we will be getting the winds of winter four years from now in 2027. <laughs> but I don't know, when it comes to the winds of winter and the doors of stone, I think there is nothing predicting when they will ever be released. I know that some fans of A Song of Ice and Fire are really confident that winds of winter will be released in 2024. And hey, if that ends up coming true, I am happy to be proven wrong. But until there is really a final confirmation regarding the final release date uh, from George Martin or maybe the publisher, I will not believe any release date on the Winds of Winter. So I guess that's a bit of a downer for those of you who are expecting uh, Winds of Winter to be released in 2024. But here is something I know that will be released in 2024. Well, most likely anyway, and it is regarding uh, the Stormlight Archive Book 5. So this is just a small update, but Brandon Sanderson is almost 90% through the first draft of the Stormlight Archive Book 5, which I think is amazing. I think it is almost guaranteed that he will be done with writing the Stormlight Archive Book 5 before copy edit and all that uh, by the end of this year. But the update is this. It seems like the final title for the Stormlight Archive Book 5 will be rebranded to Win and Truth. That's it. It's no longer Knights of Wind and Truth, even though that will be the in-world book in the Stormlight Archive series. So yeah, that's, well, I don't know how I feel about it. Knights of Wind and Truth is already kind of like a, an odd name, I guess, but Wind and Truth feels too plain for a book in the Stormlight Archive. So let me know. Let me know what you think about this uh, title. Anderson did mention that he's not fully confirmed whether this will be the final title yet, but he's starting to feel really good about Win and Truth becoming the final title for Stormlight Archive Book 5. But for me, more importantly, the content will have to be the best and I hope Sanderson can deliver on that because the Stormlight Archive is a special series for me and I know many fans of Brandon Sanderson, Epic Fantasy and the Cosmere agree that the Stormlight Archive is something special. So hopefully it will become the best of the series. And for the next three news to spotlight, all of them are Joe Abercrombie related. So yeah, this is something exciting uh, for me because the first law world just like the Stormlight Archive is something truly special uh, for me and well any news on the First Law world is always something good uh, for me. It's always a good day to have good news regarding the First Law world and the first one is about uh, the best of cold uh, movie adaptation. So the director Tim Miller has mentioned that Joe Abercrombie is involved in everything even though Joe himself said that well not really everything. I don't know why but you know Joe Abercrombie like to joke around. But anyway, uh, this is good news. As long as he's involved in the production, I think we have seen many examples, well not many, but a few examples where the creator are involved in the production of the movie or TV show adaptation and the result ends up being something really good. Let's just take a look at One Piece. One Piece, everyone was so confident that it, well the TV show is doomed, but apparently so many people end up living One Piece TV show adaptation. And the same also goes to Sandman. 
uh, by Neil Gaiman and also The Good Omens, which also have Neil Gaiman involved in the production. And yeah, I think it's always a good thing to have the creator being involved in the production of the movie and TV show adaptation. I'm excited about this. Best of Cult is the first book in the standalone trilogy in the first law world. And I think uh, with Rebecca Ferguson being Monza Morcato, I think there is a really good chance this one will become, well, something really good. And maybe if Best of Cold movie adaptation do well, maybe there's a chance of the first law trilogy uh, being adapted really well also, hopefully. But again, the first step is to make sure Best of Cold uh, adaptation is done right first. And moving on to the next one, it seems like the Age of Madness trilogy, uh, the box set for the Age of Madness trilogy paperback is out now. Age of Madness is the last trilogy in the first law world, the last trilogy so far anyway. I mean, there is always the possibility that Joe Abercrombie will return uh, writing in the first law world. But for now, Age of Madness is the final trilogy in the first law world. And it starts with a little hatred, the trouble with peace, and finally the wisdom of crowds. And now if you want a box set of the Trade Paperback US edition published by Orbit, it is available to purchase now. And finally, still related to the first law world and also Age of Madness, well, the special edition, the special and limited edition for The Great Change and Other Lies by Joe Abercrombie is available to purchase now from Subterranean Press. Now, this is a collection of four short stories in one uh, novella size uh, special edition. So yeah, it is quite expensive. It's about $60, not counting the shipping, uh, the shipping fee yet. But I believe at the time of recording this video, this special edition is still available. But yeah, Great Change and Other Lies will contain four short stories taking place in the age of Madness uh, trilogy. And Joe Abercrombie has mentioned that it might be a good idea for you to read Edge of Madness first before you start reading uh, The Great Change and Other Lies. And well, if he says so, better believe it. But yeah, I think the cover art done by John Anthony Di Giovanni plus the four interior artworks inside this book looks beautiful. I love John Anthony Di Giovanni's artwork and he has been doing a lot of artwork for Subterranean Press for Age of Matters trilogy and this one is another exceptional stuff from him. And moving on to the next piece of news to talk about will be regarding Nicholas Eames' new book. Now, this is not the third novel in the band series. I'm not trying to do some clickbait here or anything, but this is indeed a new story by Nicholas Eames in the form of a graphic a novel titled Barbaric. Nicholas Ims will help write the story and I really like the cover art, this variant cover art by Angela Wu, which is a homage to the first volume of Berserk by Kentaro Miura. Take a look at them side by side. I think this cover art looks great and I hope I can get a copy of this one. I love Kings of the Wild, I love Bloody Rose and I think I will end up liking this one as well. Even though uh, I don't usually click with reading graphic novels, I don't know why. I love manga but when it comes to graphic novel i i always feel like many of the illustrations and drawings uh, felt too static but again this is just my personal preference and i will still give this one a try after all i did end up enjoying some graphic novels like uh, elric elric of melibone adapted by julian blondel i still have two more news to spotlight and then we will talk about kickstarter and then special edition but these two news they are awards related let's start with the first one this is regarding the results of the hugo award 2023 so the results of Hugo Award 2023 has been announced and the best novel of the year goes to Natal and Boone by T. King Fisher. I haven't read this one, I heard that this is a dark fairy tale, but that's really not all. For the best series, The Children of Time Trilogy by Adrian Tchaikovsky won the best series award. I think that's amazing. I love Children of Time. I felt like Children of Ruin, the second book, was good, but not as good as Children of Time. But I still haven't read the final one, Children of Memory. Yeah, I haven't read that book yet. Hopefully that will be a satisfying conclusion to this spider-filled <laughs> trilogy. But yeah, this actually won the best series in the Hugo Award 2023. And also, Travis Baldry won the award for the best newcomer in fantasy. But yeah, there are many more awards in the Hugo Award 2023. I will leave the link to the awards, to the result of the awards in the description down below and let me know your thoughts. And well, that's not all. There is still one more awards to spotlight. You know that Hugo Awards mostly consists of 
I think it always consists of traditionally published fantasy and sci-fi books. Well, the results of our Fantasy 2023 for the best self-published fantasy books and series is out now. And there are many great self-published fantasy series and books listed here. For example, Dragon Mage by M. L. Spencer at the number 8 spot, and then you have Mortal Techniques by Rob J. Hayes at the number 6 spot. There is also the Tainted Dominion series by uh, Crystal Matar, which I still have to continue because I really enjoyed the first book, and that's at the number 5 spot. And together with Crystal Matar, we have Thread Light Trilogy by Zach Argal. I still have to read that trilogy. It is one of my priority series to read uh, next year. And the same thing goes to the Dark Prophet Saga by uh, Zachary Pike at the number 4 spot. And then we have Cradle dropping from the number 1 spot to the number 3. Cradle by Will White is at the number 3 spot. And you know what's at the number 2 spot? We have The Bound and the Broken by Ryan Cahill. It seems like Ryan Cahill, as I said, his fame is keep rising in fantasy and I, don't, I do not think anyone can stop him now. <laughs> and at the number 1 spot, as predicted and well deserved, it is The Sword of Kaigen by M. L. Wang, my favorite self-published fantasy book of all time. But yeah, it is overall a really great list in my opinion. I've read more than half of them and well, I enjoyed the ones that I have read. I still have to catch up to many, many series listed on this list and I will leave the link to the award and the result in the description down below. So now let's talk about Kickstarter. The first two Kickstarter campaign uh, I want to spotlight today, both of them haven't gone live yet. Let's start with that first, okay? And the first one is Mother of Learning Arc 3 and Arc 4 by Nobody103 or Domagoy Kurmaj. And this one is published by Raidmark again. And yeah, the Kickstarter page for this hardcover edition for the book 3 and book 4 of Mother of Learning is available now. And I think this one will be another beautiful edition just like the first two volumes. And come to think about it, I still haven't received my second volume of Mother of Learning. Hopefully it will arrive soon. But just like the first two, I think this one will have a cover art done by uh, Man Sik Young, designed by Sean King, and also there will be end papers by Daniel Kamarudin and Asur Misowa. I think anyway. But again, make sure to check out the Kickstarter campaign when it's gone live. But for now, you can click notify me in the Kickstarter page I listed in the description down below. And the same one goes to the next one. This is something super exciting. This is the ultimate edition of Gun Metal Gods by Zamil Akhtar. I absolutely love the cover art. The new cover art by Rashad looks so gorgeous. And it's still somehow similar in style not in style of the artwork, but in style of the design and scene to the standard cover art of Gun Metal Gods, which Daniel Green has praised really highly. I still haven't read this series yet. I know there's still, I think, one more book before the series is completed, but this is the ultimate edition of Gun Metal Gods. And yeah, there will be a Kickstarter campaign for it going live in the first week of November, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, sorry, I just checked and the Kickstarter campaign will go live on the 14th of November. Just like Mother of Learning, if you're interested in this one, make sure to click notify me in the Kickstarter page. And for the last four Kickstarter campaign, I know there are a lot of Kickstarter campaigns for self-published fantasy books, now but these are gorgeous and it's up to you to decide which one do you want to get but for the last four uh, kickstarter campaign all of them the kickstarter campaign have gone live and you can check them out in more details in the description down below but the first one i want to spot that will be the shadow watch by sa klopfenstein and this one is funded already and there will be a new cover art done by rachel st Clair and interior artworks by andrew maleski and also omer burak now there will be also a fully colored map and well many other stuff like Smithson binding, acid free paper and also great production value. I haven't read Shadow Watch yet but it seems like quite a lot of people really enjoy this one so hopefully when I get around to reading this it will be using this beautiful hardcover edition that is funded through this Kickstarter campaign and the next Kickstarter campaign to spotlight will be the one hosted and the next Kickstarter campaign to spot that will be by a fellow booktuber. This is the Advent of Winter by Dominish Books. Yeah, compiled by Dominish Books and it will contain 24 short stories by 24 authors. The list of authors, you can check them out here. Ryan Cahill, Zach Argyle, Palmer Pickering and many more authors are all involved and I look forward to reading this. The Kickstarter campaign is funded already but there is still some time to pledge yourself to this campaign if you want to. And the cover art is done by Katrina Paints. I love Katrina Paints artwork and it's great that Dominic has hired her to do the cover art of the Advent of Winter anthology. And the next Kickstarter campaign I want to spot that will be for something truly gorgeous. This is for a narrative art book by Michael Bartel. 
House of Poison. And yeah, it will be about a Rome historical fiction novel and also tabletop. But I'm just here to talk about the narrative art book. Narrative art book is basically something like World of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, meaning that it will be like a coffee table book and it will contain more than 70 fully color artwork by Gal or Art. I think they all look amazing. I've seen some previews of it. They look beautiful. And yeah, the Kickstarter campaign is funded already. If you're interested in some Rome-inspired historical fiction or historical fantasy series or novel, then make sure to check it out. And onward to the next one. I still have two more Kickstarter campaign to spotlight. The next one is Riders of Fire Omnibus by Aileen Mueller. And this is a Dragon Rider epic fantasy. And the cover art is done by Saint Jupiter. I think the cover art and also the design looks absolutely stunning. Just take a look at this black cover art and the gold spray I just I think it looks stunning it looks beautiful uh, the cover artist and designer has done such a great job uh, with this design with the design for the Riders of Fire Omnibus and there will be interior artworks done by Joe Requeza. And yeah, the Riders of Fire will be an Omnibus. It will consist of three books in the series. And then eventually there will be a second Omnibus uh, published through the Kickstarter campaign also someday. And finally, the last Kickstarter campaign I want to spotlight. This is also for a cover reveal. And this will be for Demon by Rob J. Hayes. This is the first book in the archive of the God Eater. And uh, this is a part of the God Eater Saga Kickstarter campaign. And yeah, this one, just like the Riders of Fire, the Kickstarter campaign for this is almost over. There is still one more uh, stretch goal to meet and it will be for spray edges beautiful spray edges and i know that rob j hayes hasn't planned this kickstarter campaign to be well to be a special edition but it seems like because of the stretch goal and how successful uh, this kickstarter campaign has been so far it really seems like these three hardcovers will become a special edition so yeah i look forward to getting myself a copy of this three books uh, the first phase of the god eater saga and then i will read them all uh, next year like always the cover art is done by Ashper and the design is done by Sean King and also for Harold it has been confirmed that there will be a special dust jacket illustrated by Felix Ortiz so that's a wrap on the topic of Kickstarter campaign now let's talk about special edition I have four special editions to spotlight today and for the first one well, this is just news regarding uh, Malazan, Book of the Fallen, uh, published by The Broken Binding. Uh, Malazan, Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. So Broken Binding has confirmed that every book in their edition of Malazan, Book of the Fallen, will come with an asset-free paper. And yeah, I think that's an amazing thing to do. But this doesn't mean that the special edition will come with a Smith soon binding. They will still be glued, okay? Glued bound. Unfortunately, this will have to be the case because if not, if they're going to implement Smith soon binding as well, the price of each book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen will increase a lot. And well, I think Broken Binding wants to make sure these hardcover editions are still affordable to the public. And yeah, I think that's a nice a nice move. But more importantly, acid free paper is really a good thing to have. For those of you who don't know, Acid-free paper will decrease the chance of your paper yellowing by a lot. No kidding. So yeah, I think that's a good thing that they're going to implement that into their edition of Malazan Book of the Fallen. And the next special edition to spotlight, this is still regarding the Broken Binding edition, but this one is for The Crucible of Chaos by Sebastian de Cassel. So The Crucible of Chaos will be a prequel to The Court of Shadows. Both of them will be released in 2024, if I'm not mistaken. But this is a return to the world of Great Coots. I like that quartet. That quartet was so fun, even though I had issue with the first book, but starting from the second book and up to the fourth book, they are all really good in my opinion, especially the third novel, Saint's Blood. Really love Saint's Blood. It's good that Sebastian de Castle has finally decided to return to the world of great goods. For the last two special editions to Spotlight, both of them are published by Orbit Books. And the first one will be for the 10th anniversary edition of Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. This 10th anniversary edition will come with a new cover art done by John Harris and also designed by Loren Panepinto. I really like this new cover art because it doesn't feature any text. But there is still the option to use the text here as you can see in the image here. But yeah, it will come with illustrated and papers and it will also be foil stamp case. I think the overall design is kind of similar to their special edition of The Witcher, The, the Witcher by Andrzej Sapkowski. But I haven't read uh, Ancillary Justice yet. I know that this book actually won 
so many awards when it came out. It has been hailed as one of the best sci-fi debut. I still haven't read anything by Anne Leckie yet. If you have read it, do let me know what you think about it and do you think I should prioritize uh, reading uh, this trilogy. And finally, the last special edition to Spotlight will be for a continuation to their special edition of The Expanse by James S.A. Corey. Now, there has been a special edition for Leviathan Wakes and finally, Orbit confirmed Caliban's War and Abaddon's Game will be getting their special collector's edition as well. It is more or less similar in design to the first book, Leviathan Wakes, but once again, it is designed by Loren Panepinto. The dust jacket will come with a reversible uh, cover art. The reversible cover art will contain uh, the original cover art by Daniel Doshu, but without the text. So yeah, they will look so good on your bookshelves. And I don't know why I still haven't got my copy of Leviathan Wakes. I think it got lost. I think it got lost in the mail uh, somewhere uh, in the sea or in the sky. It's still great news though that The Expanse is finally getting a continuation to their special edition. It is always annoying when you buy a special edition of the first book and then you find out there is no continuation to the special edition. And that has happened a lot. For example, the name of the 10th anniversary edition. It has been 12 years, there is still no 10th anniversary edition for the wise man's sphere. But back to the expanse, for those of you who got yourself a copy of Leviathan's Wake, a 10th anniversary edition, this edition will also come with an illustrated and papers and it is now possible for you to get a matching copy of Caliban's War and Abaddon's Gate and hopefully for the rest of the series. Now let's move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. Time to talk about some cover reveals. I have four cover reveals to Spotlight. The first one is again from Orbit Books. This is for the third and final book in the Songs of Penelope series by Claire North. The title of the book will be The Last Song of Penelope. I've heard many great things about this series that begins with Itaka, but I still haven't read this trilogy yet. I know that one of my co-bloggers, Celeste, really loved uh, the Songs of Penelope trilogy so far. And not only I haven't read anything in this trilogy yet, I haven't read anything by Claire North. So yeah, I really should fix that soon, but I'm still not sure whether I will start from Itaka or her other books. But yeah, I look forward to reading Claire North's books uh, someday. And now moving on to self-published fantasy books, we have three self-published fantasy cover art to spotlight. All of them looks gorgeous, prove me wrong. And the first one is Bolt Ascension by Vaughn Roycroft. Take a look at this cover art. This is one of the best cover art that I have ever seen. And this is again illustrated by John Anthony Di Giovanni. I like the first book, The Severing Sun, and I thought John Anthony Di Giovanni won't be able to top the cover art of the first book. But apparently, I was wrong. This is a better cover art. And hopefully, the content will follow the same notion as being better compared to the first book. I look forward to reading Bolt Ascension. I think at the time of recording this video, I believe that a review copy of it is on the way to me right now. And I will try to read it as soon as I can once it arrives. So thank you so much to Von Roycroft for being willing to send me a copy of Bolt Ascension. And congratulations for such a beautiful cover art. Easily one of the best cover art that I have ever seen. And it was my pleasure to do the cover reveal of it. And the next cover reveal I want to spotlight is again for a cover reveal that I did reveal on book Twitter. And this is for the first book in the Legends of Bruhai by Tori Tekken. And the title is The Bloodstone. The cover art is done by Sarah from Sparrow Spring. I think the cover art looks striking. I love the mask and I love the wraparound cover art. And just like Bolt Ascension, I tend to like wraparound cover art. And I'm truly glad that some artists and some authors are still going through the wraparound cover art route. And yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, Bloodstones will be the author's uh, Tori. It will be Tori's first epic fantasy novel. I look forward to reading this uh, again as soon as I can. And the last cover reveal I want to spot today will be for an urban fantasy series. And the title of this series is The Depth Collection by Andrew Gibbler. The title of the third book is The Star Summit with a cover art done by Chris McGrath, designed by Sean King. And if you take a look at the design, you might notice similarities with the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. But if I'm not mistaken, the Dresden Files is indeed one of the author's main inspiration. I own the first book, Soul Fraud, but I still haven't read it. When it comes to urban fantasy taking place in our world, it feels like I really have to be in the right reading mood uh, before I dive into them. And I'm just waiting for the right reading mood to spark and then I will read uh, the Depth Collection series by Andrew Givler. And finally, for the last topic of today's video, this will be for a noteworthy release. And there is only one noteworthy release I want to spot out today. This will be for a new book by Mary Brennan, the author behind many books and series like the memoirs of Lady Trent. So, 
Mary Brennan has a new book out and it is a Norse mythology retelling from Poetic Edda. The title of this book is The Waking of Angantyr. Generally speaking, I tend to love Norse mythology epic fantasy or Norse mythology based fantasy. So I definitely will be keeping my eye on this one. But honestly speaking, I do not think I'll be diving into this anytime soon because I do want to read Memoirs of Lady Trent first. And no, this is not related to Memoirs of Lady Trent, but Memoirs of Lady Trent is probably Mary Brandon's most popular work and I want to read that first. Most likely within next year, we will see. So that's it. That's a wrap on SFF Spotlight episode 42. And as always, I just want to say thank you so much for keep on watching my SFF Spotlight videos. It's time consuming, but I will never complain about it because, well, there are many of you who are tuning to SFF Spotlight and I'm truly grateful uh, for that. But yeah, I think that's about it from me today. I will probably post the next episode about 10 days from now. But for now, let me know what you think about the news that I spotlighted today in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me. 